to present to you a representative of Interpal, the Palestinian Development and Relief Fund, one of the only biggest Palestinian charities solely dedicated to supporting the Palestinian people. It is a charity that ensures that Palestinian people are receiving humanitarian aid and support that they need. It is a charity that has also only recently been attacked in an attempt to try and close it down by Zionist supporters. But we will not let that happen. I now represent to you Doha Adati from Interpol. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all. I'm not going to stand here today and reiterate everything that the previous speakers have already spoken about. Every night we sit in front of the news and hear about the amount of people who've been killed, who've been injured and who've been made homeless. And we sit wondering and frustrated and angry and wondering what exactly we can do to help them and wishing there was something that we can do to help. I can tell you now that there is. Interpal is a leading British charity that is entirely dedicated to helping Palestinians in need. We were the first organization to deliver aid to them since the beginning of this crisis in Gaza. Through medical NGOs in Egypt, through the UNRWA um, group, and through our local, com uh, through our local uh, com committees on the ground, we were able to um, send medical aid to them and homes and we were able to send medical aid, provide alternative shelter and financial funds. None of this could have been possible without the help of our generous donors. However, with approximately 1.5 million people in Gaza, it is the most, populated, most densely populated place on the planet. And despite the great support that we receive, as the crisis continues to escalate, the number of people in desperate need for your help continues to, arise, to, continues to rise at an alarming rate. That is where you come into this. Even if you feel that what you have to give isn't much, you've got to, ha you've got to remember that many of these people have absolutely nothing. Homes and family businesses that have been kept and built for years and run for generations have been demolished in a matter of weeks. If every person in this crowd today could give just one pound to the cause, that would be a few thousand pounds raised in just a matter of a couple of hours. I also feel that I have to mention that we're one of the very few charities where 100% of your specified donations will go towards the cause. Just before the start of the second intifada, I spent some time in Jebelia refugee camp with my family. Back then the living standards were extremely poor and although, although there was nothing at the moment going on, we weren't able, it was completely unbearable. So to imagine what they're going through at this moment in time is completely worrying, completely uh, is upsetting. The latest statistics show that 30,000 people have been left homeless and 80,000 have had to find shelter in UN schools. Every, um, these people desperately require every ounce of help. And if you feel that you have any, don any donation to make today, people are going around with the buckets, Interpol volunteers and representatives. And we'd like you to be able to ask them for leaflets, ask them for any sort, you know, any sort of information to be able to donate towards us in the future. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. For almost two years now, the people of Gaza have been suffering an intolerable blockade, the siege of Gaza. Now, over the past few months, many courageous people have been working to break that blockade, in particular by sending ships through the Mediterranean to Gaza to directly take aid and support to the people there. Our next speaker, Baroness Jenny Tong, was on the third ship to Gaza in November. Please welcome Jenny Tong. If we're going to what, use the word courageous, we have to use it about the women and the children and the people of Gaza. How they are tolerating what is going on. Can you imagine mothers and grandmothers trying to comfort children 
with night terrors, but not just the sort of night terrors we see. Real ones, real bombs, real tanks, real horror. Limbs being torn off your children before your eyes. Their mothers being killed in front of their children and the children having to stand there because no one can get help to them. It is a disgusting, obscene outrage what is going on in Gaza. It is obscene that they cannot escape anywhere. It is obscene that the foreign press are not allowed in. And that almost proves that Israel is guilty of what they're doing. Our government stands by and makes feeble remarks and says it's all up to America. What a nonsense. What we need to do now is persuade all our politicians, as we have persuaded the Liberal Democrats and they have come on side, to say no more arms to Israel. There must be an embargo. We must suspend the EU-Israel trade agreement. And we must look eventually, if this doesn't stop, to a full trade embargo and boycotting of everything Israeli. This must be stopped. And remember finally, Gaza is not just a single issue. Gaza is because of over 40 years of illegal occupation of Palestinian territory by Israel. It must go on. The fight must go on. Palestinians, the darkest hour is always before the dawn. The dawn will come. Palestine will be free.